Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the next session on Pharmaceutical Organic Chemistry, Paper 3. In the Unit 4, we are studying about heterocycles, Part 2. In the Lecture 5, we will be studying about quinoline, isoquinoline, and acridine synthesis, reactions, and applications. I am Dr. Balaji, currently working as Associate Professor in the School of Biotechnology at Jawaharlal Nehru University. This project is sponsored by DTH Swayamprabha, MHRD, New Delhi. The topics that will be covered in this session include synthesis of quinoline, we will be looking at the Combs synthesis, Scrub synthesis, dobner hahnmeller reaction, Camp synthesis, Friedlander synthesis, Fitzinger reaction, connard limpan synthesis. We will also be studying about the synthesis of isoquinoline. We will be mainly focusing on pomeranz fritz synthesis, bischler napierski reaction, pictet gams synthesis, Bruckner synthesis, Picted Spengler reaction. And after that, we will be studying about reactions of quinolines and isoquinolines. We will be mainly focusing on electrophilic and nucleophilic reactions, aromatic nucleophilic ring opening and ring closing reaction, reduction, and oxidation reactions. And finally, we will be studying about synthesis and reactions of acridines. Here, we will be studying about Betson synthesis, Wolman condensation, Friedlander synthesis. And in the case of uh, reactions, we will be studying about the electrophilic uh, nucleophilic reactions, aromatic nucleophilic ring opening and ring closing uh, synthesis, reductions and oxidations. Welcome to the next session on heterocycles. Uh, now we are going to look at uh, quinoline, isoquinoline and acridines. So what are quinoline, isoquinoline and acridines? These are basically polyaromatic six-membered nitrogen heterocycles. So the structures are shown here. Quinoline is uh, having two six-membered ring and isoquinoline is also having two six-membered ring whereas acridine is having three six-membered ring. And if you look at uh, quinoline and isoquinoline, they are basically isomers, positional isomers. In quinoline, the nitrogen is in at uh, position number one and in isoquinoline, the nitrogen is at position number two. Uh, if you look at uh, the quinoline and isoquinoline structures, they have an aromatic ring that is a benzene ring and they are also having a pyridine ring. So these two are called as benzopyridines. So that means quinoline and isoquinolines are generally called as benzopyridines. And these moieties are generally widely present in many uh, natural products uh, that is naturally occurring alkaloids like uh, papaverine, laudanosine, quinine, etc. And uh, if we look at uh, biosynthesis, uh, quinoline and isoquinoline are generally uh, uh, synthesized from amino acids. Mainly, uh, tryptophan is the starting material for tyrosine and uh, tyrosine is the starting material for isoquinoline. Uh, when we look at the structure, we will understand how this is uh, possible. So, uh, this is the tryptophan structure. And here we have a six membered ring and we have one, two, three, four. In fourth position uh, from the benzene ring, if you look at uh, the fourth position, we have a quinoline moiety. And if you look at here, uh, this is the benzene ring. And if you start from here, one, two, three, four. So in the fourth position, an amino group is present. So this is how from tryptophan quinoline can be prepared biosynthetically. And if you look at uh, tyrosine, we have a six membered ring and we have one, two, three. In the third position, we have a nitrogen. And if you look at the structure of tyrosine, we have a aromatic, that is the benzene ring. And we have one, two, three. In the third position, we have a nitrogen. So tyrosine and tryptophan are basically the biosynthetic starting materials for isoquinoline and quinolines. And acridine is nothing but a six-membered heterocycle with nitrogen is present in the central ring. So let us look at uh, some of the important uh, quinolines and isoquinolines. 
quinine structure is given. This is having the quinoline structure uh, and uh, pefloxin is a uh, another compound which is also having a quinoline structure although this is a reduced ring and uh, we have chloroquine which is also having the quinoline structure and uh, papaverin if you look at uh, this is having the isoquinoline structure reticulin and uh, quinapril both of them are also having the isoquinoline structure so these are some of the important quinolines and the isoquinolines let us look at the synthesis of uh, quinolines. Uh, quinoline structure can, uh, the central structure is shown here and this can be prepared from various uh, starting materials and uh, the dotted lines basically show how the bond can be actually connected. So that is how the structures are uh, given. And if you look at carefully in all the cases, there is a aromatic ring with the nitrogen unit. That is nothing but a Aniline moiety is present in most of the cases or in fact in all the cases. So all the starting materials for isoquinoline in uh, most of the synthetic uh, process is basically the aniline derivative and the aniline derivative is actually converted uh, further to quinoline moiety. So here again we have uh, this particular bond is formed. In this particular case the top bond is formed. So like that anilines and ortho substituted anilines are aromatic primary amines as the nucleophilic nitrogen donating component so that is uh, responsible for the heterocycle structures and the other part generally comes from electrophilic uh, three carbon unit usually carbonyl compound so that is how we can actually make uh, quinolines and these are the two major references uh, which is covered i have actually used uh, these two books for uh, many of the synthesis which is represented in this one i am not giving the individual references on the pages but uh, these two books basically uh, book chapters Recent progress in synthesis of quinoline which appeared in current organic chemistry and the six-membered heterocycles. The chemistry of heterocycles are the two uh, chapters I have referred for this particular paper. So let us start with the quinoline synthesis. First we will talk about uh, Gohm, Gohm's synthesis. So in this Gohm synthesis, aryl amines, that's what uh, we have seen earlier. So uh, anilines, basically the aromatic amines are reacted with the 1,3 dicarbonyl compound. So these are all the two components which are involved in the formation. So the first step, the basically the Schiff's base uh, like reaction actually uh, happens in the first step. So which leads to an ene and amine. So ene amine is formed and this ene amine is having a carbonyl unit here. So this undergoes cyclization in presence of a acid catalyzed. So here we are using sulfuric acid. So this undergoes um, Basically, uh, this is the aromatic ring, so there is a, a pi electron rich uh, a system is here and this carbonyl carbon is electrophilic in nature, so this pi bond electrons attack here and uh, that leads to uh, the hydroxy derivative which is a tetrahyd uh, a tetrahedral intermediate which undergoes dehydration to give the double bond here and uh, this uh, double bond shifts to the, towards the nitrogen and finally we end up with the quinoline moiety. And in the scrub synthesis, uh, basically acrolein is the starting material uh, which is actually generated in situ from glycerol uh, using a strong acid. And this again, uh, the acrolein, this is the um, actual intermediate which is going to react in this particular case. Again, if you look at here, this is 1, 2, 3. So this is again a 3 carbon unit and this is also the carbonyl unit. So as we mentioned earlier, we have an aromatic uh, amino unit and we have a carbonyl unit. So these two uh, react together at high temperature and again the cyclization is more or less similar to the one what we have seen earlier. So that leads to quinoline. So basically here, aryl amine reacts with the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds to give quinolines. And the next one is a uh, dominer von Miller reaction. So in this uh, reaction here again, uh, this is basically the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. So this reacts with the substituted uh, anilines uh, in the presence of zinc chloride and FeCl3 that is basically Lewis acid uh, catalyzed reaction in this particular case. So this leads to this particular intermediate which again undergoes cyclization to give the uh, cyclase substituted uh, quinoline moiety. And when we look at CAMS quinoline synthesis, so here orthoacyl amino acetophenone. So this is the acetophenone unit and this is the amino unit and this amine is actually substituted. So the substitution is the acyl substitution what we uh, call here. So these are ortho positions. So this is ortho acyl 
amino acetophenone uh, this in presence of a strong base uh, undergoes cyclization to give two products that is a and b are formed so these are basically the isomeric products which are formed in this particular reaction and uh, the next one is the friedlander synthesis in this friedlander synthesis two amino benzaldehydes uh, reacts with the carbonyl compounds basically here ketones are shown here and this undergo uh, dehydration uh, to give the cyclized derivative which is the quinoline derivative so here we have the substituted that is 1 2 3 so 2 3 di substituted quinolines can be prepared using this particular method and uh, the next one is uh, this is the instead of the aldehyde unit we are taking the ketone unit so two amino aryl ketones also uh, reacts with either carboxylic acid that is the uh, acetic acid is the carboxylic acid when it is used in presence of a, a mineral acid and heating leads to the formation of this particular uh, cyclized quinoline derivative or if we use ethanol that is the alcohol is used again we also get another product so these are all the two ways by which uh, the aryl amino ketones can be converted to corresponding quinolines and these two are substituted quinolines. The next one is uh, Pitzinger reaction. So in this particular case, the keto acid is the actual starting material and this keto acid is prepared from isotene by treatment with the base. So isotene on treatment with the base gives this corresponding uh, keto acid and this keto acid is reacted with another carbonyl compound. So here, if you look at here, we have the amino group which is already present here. So this forms the ship's base basically with the corresponding keto derivative that is the imine is formed in the first step and this undergoes uh, uh, re, uh, tautomerization to give the yin amine. So this is the yin unit and this is amine. So then once the yin amine is formed, this undergoes cyclization to give the quinoline as shown here. So this is the uh, carboxylic acid is present here. So instead of quinoline, this is quinoline. So the corresponding carboxylic acid is there. And the next uh, reaction is the Conrad Limpach reaction. So here aniline is treated with the beta keto ester. So this is the carbonyl unit. So this carbonyl unit and this is the amino unit. So these two are uh, reacted together to give the shift space. That is the imine is formed in the first step. And this on heating undergoes cyclization to give the 4-hydroxyquinoline derivatives. And uh, we can... Uh, Compare all the reactions so far we have seen uh, is given in this particular uh, schematic diagram. So uh, the starting material in most of the cases is the aromatic amine that is aniline is the starting material. And uh, this aniline when reacted uh, with uh, a carbonyl compound uh, that is what is the Combs synthesis. So this is a 1,3 dicarbonyl compound leads to the quinoline derivative. And uh, when we use uh, beta keto esters that is the Conrad Limpach uh, synthesis we uh, get the hydroxyquinoline derivatives. And in the Dobner reaction, we have an aldehyde and the keto acid, uh, uh, which reacts with the aniline to give the corresponding uh, carboxylic acid substituted uh, quinolines. And when we have uh, alpha beta unsaturated unit, uh, which reacts with the anilines, we get the substituted quinolines. That is the dobner Miller reaction. And in the gold jacob synthesis, this particular compound is treated with the aniline to give the corresponding hydroxyquinolines. And let us look at uh, the isoquinoline synthesis. So uh, isoquinoline can be prepared using amino aldehyde and an aldehyde. So this is a pomeranz fritz reaction. So in this particular case, um, this particular amino aldehyde that is Amino aldehydes are quite unstable, uh, so that is the reason they are generally the aldehyde unit is protected as the diacetyl. So this is uh, quite stable. So we cannot uh, generally use uh, amino aldehyde directly in many of the reactions because amino aldehydes, since they have the amino group and an aldehyde unit, they undergo self-condensation. That is the amine uh, shift space formation or the amine formation, and they generally lead to polymerization. So in most of the cases in synthetic chemistry, when we have to use uh, amino aldehyde, basically the amino aldehyde, the aldehyde part is basically protected as the acetal. So that is where here we start with the acetal protected amino aldehyde. And this reacted with the uh, uh, benzaldehyde leads to the 
amino acetal intermediate so this is the acetal unit and uh, this is the imine unit so this amino acetal is uh, actually formed in this particular case and uh, this uh, treatment with uh, strong acid at a high temperature leads to loss of uh, ethanol is lost in this particular case which leads to carbocation and this undergoes cyclization to give the quinoline derivative isoquinoline derivative as shown here so if you look at uh, the previous synthesis uh, in the previous quinoline synthesis we were starting with uh, anilines directly and this particular case the amino unit comes from outside of the benzene ring so that is what is the difference in this particular case and uh, we can also use a dialdehyde and amine because if you look at uh, the synthesis we have one aldehyde we have another uh, aldehyde protected aldehyde we have amine so we have three units which are essential for this particular cyclization to occur and in the first case we saw amino aldehydes that means amine and aldehyde are present on the same unit and the second aldehyde came as a separate unit and in the second case both the aldehyde can be present on the same substrate and the amine can come from outside so that is what we are going to say this is what is the uh, schlitter muller modification of the same reaction so we have the uh, aldehyde there is an aldehyde unit there is another uh, aldehyde unit which is protected so basically this is a, a reaction in which a glyoxal semiacetal this is the dialdehyde unit and this is the amino unit that is benzylamines are used in this particular case so benzylamine and the glyoxal semiacetal both react together to give this particular imine so this we know uh, is the intermediate which is formed which is the imine here and this is the acetal here so this is basically the amino acetal in other words we have a benzol unit that's why this is called the benzol amino acetal and this again uh, undergoes cyclization similar to the one what we have seen earlier in this particular case so this leads to the substituted isoquinoline derivative so the isoquinoline can be prepared in two different ways one is the aldehyde and amine unit present on the same substrate as shown here or the amine and the aldehyde unit can be present on two different units so the next one is the bischler napierski reaction so in this particular case this is the starting material this is the 3 phenyl uh, ethyl amine is our start, uh, starting material this is acetylated acylated using um, acid chlorides and uh, basically uh, acetyl chloride is used in this particular case so this leads to the acyl uh, amide so the acyl amide is actually formed acylated uh, amine is formed so this on treatment with uh, phosphorus uh, uh, tetra p4o10 that is the dimer of phosphorus pentoxide or even we can use uh, phosphoryl chloride or any other lewis acid can also be used in this particular step to effect the particular cyclization here so this yields the basically the dihydroisoquinoline is formed which can be further converted or aromatized to the corresponding isoquinoline derivatives uh, the conversion can be effected using palladized carbon The next one is picted GAMS synthesis. So in this particular case, uh, this particular starting material that is a styryl amide is uh, basically treated with P2O5 and uh, heating that is reflux at a very high temperature leads to the cyclization giving this particular uh, isoquinoline derivative. So if you look at the mechanism for this picted GAMS reaction, so basically uh, this is our uh, starting material so the styryl amide this is a styryl amide uh, this uh, loses water as the first step that's what we have seen that so loss of water molecule is affected by p2o5 which is a very good dehydrating agent that leads to the e and amine basically but of course this is a amide protected uh, amine this is a protected amine so e and amine is the intermediate which is actually formed so this again uh, reacts in the presence of an acid to undergo the cyclization basically this cyclization is affected by the uh, catalyst what is present as uh, here uh, for phosphoric acid and uh, this leads to the cyclization as shown here in this particular case so this uh, in the first step the carbonyl compound is uh, protonated because the reaction happens at the acid under acidic condition so this carbonyl uh, carbon um, takes the proton and uh, it forms the 
particular uh, oxonium ion intermediate and uh, due to that uh, this carbon becomes uh, highly electrophilic and uh, the double bond from the benzene ring are donated to this particular electrophilic carbon which leads to the cyclization so here this is the tetrahedral intermediate which is formed and this loses a proton to form the aromatization of this particular ring because this intermediate is quite unstable and uh, that's the reason the loss of proton uh, takes place uh, very effectively to re-aromatize the aromatic ring and then loss of the second water molecule leads to the formation of this particular quinoline derivative. The next one is the Bruckner isoquinoline synthesis. In this reaction, basically the allyl phenyl ethers are converted to substituted phenol. That is the first step is the Claisen rearrangement uh, leads to this particular uh, uh, allyl, <coughs> allyl phenols and this one treated with uh, dimethyl sulfate uh, leads to the methylation of this particular uh, phenolic unit. So this is converted to methoxy unit. And this on treatment with the potassium hydroxide undergoes isomerization of this double bond happens. So that is where uh, here we get both E and Z isomers of uh, this particular double bond happens. This on treatment with uh, sodium nitrate leads to two um, insertion of two NO groups and the NO2 group. Two different functionalities are introduced at this particular case. And uh, one is the NO unit, another one is the NO2 unit. And this on treatment with acetic anhydride undergoes acetylation on the NO group. So that means uh, we get the acetylated derivative after treatment with acetic anhydride. And uh, then the nitro group is reduced followed by protection. So the NO2 group is converted to amino group and the amino group is acetylated using uh, acetic anhydride and pyridine. And finally, this undergoes cyclization in presence of POCl3 to give the corresponding cyclized derivative. The next one is the pictet spengler reaction. So in this particular case, we are starting with uh, two aryl ethanamines. So this is the two aryl ethanamine. This reacts with the aldehyde unit, that is uh, aqueous uh, formaldehyde. Uh, this leads to this particular uh, intermediate, that is the imine is formed. And this imine uh, further reacts with uh, an aldehyde that is uh, in this particular case benzaldehyde uh, is used. This leads to 1, 2, 3, 4 tetrahydroisoquinoline as the cyclized product. And this reaction is uh, facilitated by acid catalyst. So this uh, iso uh, this tetrahydro derivative can be further reduced to quinoline derivative isoquinoline derivatives. And if the same reaction is uh, carried out by acylation of the imine, so uh, in this particular case, we have a imine intermediate which is formed. So if we treat this imine intermediate with uh, acylation, uh, that acylating uh, reagent that is here, acid chloride, so that leads to acyl imenium cation. So this is a very powerful uh, reagent for this particular cyclization reaction. And this is also a very good electrophile. So this leads to this being a very good electrophile undergoes cyclization much more effectively than this particular case. So uh, introducing a acetyl unit on the nitrogen unit as a protecting group actually facilitate this uh, cyclization much more effectively. So that is the reason this modification is used many times for the isoquinoline synthesis. Of course, this is again a tetrahydro derivative, which can be oxidized to the corresponding isoquinoline. And uh, let us look at uh, some of the reactions of uh, quinolines and isoquinolines. Uh, uh, the presence of both the carbocyclic ring and the heterocyclic ring basically favors reactions of both the moieties. That means uh, the isoquinolines and quinoline show reactions very similar to uh, benzene ring and uh, pyridine ring. And the electrophilic substitution basically takes place uh, much more readily uh, than pyridine and the reaction basically occurs on the carbocyclic ring because the nitrogen actually pulls the electron uh, away and um, that is one of the reason the nucleophilic substitution is also facilitated on this particular pyridine ring. So that is the reason uh, in both the cases what happens is in one uh, instant, the aromatic ring is uh, activated for the electrophilic substitution. 
and the heterocyclic ring is uh, activated uh, for the nucleophilic substitution because of the presence of the nitrogen. And if you look at uh, the basicity or if you compare the basicity with pyridine, pyridine is uh, having the pKa of 5.2 whereas uh, quinoline is 4.9 and isoquinoline is 5.5. So in other words what we can say is quinoline is more basic than pyridine uh, which in turn more basic than isoquinoline. And if you look at the bi electron densities, there are various places. Uh, when we look at uh, the electrophilic and the nucleophilic substitutions, we will actually see exactly what are all the places. And if you look at uh, this place, is having high electron density in the case of uh, quinolins, that is 1.003. And uh, this two position is having the lowest electron density. And uh, the fourth position is also having lowest electron density on the pyridine ring. Whereas uh, the benzene ring, if you look at uh, most of the places are electron rich. So that is the reason this uh, benzene ring undergoes electrophilic substitutions more readily because this is having more electron density. Whereas in the case of isoquinoline, if you look at uh, this place is having the least electron density. So that means that this is more prone to nucleophilic uh, substitution reactions. Whereas uh, again, if you compare between the pyridine ring and the benzene ring, Again, here again, the benzene ring is having more electron density compared to the pyridine ring. So that is the reason this isoquinoline's benzene ring undergoes electrophilic substitutions much more readily. And if you look at the resonance structures in quinoline, we have various resonance structures possible because of the presence of the heteroatom nitrogen. So we have the first three structures. These are nothing but the Kekulase uh, aromatic uh, structures. So in this particular case, there is no charge. That means we have neutral resonance structures for the quinoline unit. We have three neutral structures and we have one, two, three, four, five, five different structures on which nitrogen is having a negative charge. So that means we have a charged uh, structures are also possible for quinolines. So in all the cases, the positive charge is distributed on both the rings. Uh, if you look at here, it is in the pyridine ring. Here again, it is in the pyridine ring. Here it is in the benzene ring. Here again, it is in the benzene ring. So here it is at the ring junction. So in other words, what we can say is uh, the positive charge is completely distributed on the both the rings. And uh, because of the electronegative nitrogen atom, this type of uh, resonance structures are possible. And the dipole moment of quinoline is actually 2.10 dy. So which confirms there is a charge separation because we do need to prove that uh, the resonance structures are actually uh, possible. So that is uh, we can uh, when we measure the uh, dipole moment, we see there is a charge separation. So in other words, if uh, benz like a benzene, if you say only the calculus uh, neutral structures are possible, then we cannot explain the quinoline's 2.10 uh, dipole moment. So that clearly tells that there is a various resonance forms are possible where charge uh, structures are present in quinoline. So because of this, we can actually say that uh, various electrophilic reactions are possible. So when we take the case of uh, quinoline, we have seen that uh, uh, this position, 8 position is having the uh, highest electron density. So this is more prone to undergo electrophilic substitution followed by position number 5 in the aromatic ring. So the 8 substituted uh, electrophilic substitutions are more pronounced in the case of quinolines compared to uh, other positions. That means again 5 position is also equally having high electron density. We can actually compare, go back to our uh, previous couple of slides. Now you see here we have the maximum electron density at uh, this position that is the 8 position. So that is exactly seen in the reaction here. So the electrophile attacks at the more electron rich carbon. And if we take the case of isoquinoline, in this particular case, the pi position is having the highest electron density. So that's the reason the pi position uh, is uh, undergoing electrophilic substitution more uh, readily compared to 8 position. And in the presence of a strong acid, basically, that is if you are using sulfuric acid for the reactions, 
the uh, electrophilic reaction uh, favorably happens at a C8 position followed by C5 followed by C6. So these are all the various structures uh, how the protonation is actually happening on the quinoline derivative and under moderately acidic conditions basically the C2 position of the heterocyclic ring undergoes electrophilic substitution. So by controlling the strength of the acid that is used for the electrophilic substitutions, we can actually make a different types of quinoline derivatives. So here the protonation actually happens in the presence of this is a quinoline moiety. So the protonation happens at uh, uh, the proton addition actually happens. Proton is here the electrophile that adds to position number 8 here. And uh, if uh, the proton is lost from this quinoline moiety, then the C2 position is having the negative charge. So that means uh, uh, this is under moderately acidic conditions. This leads to C2 position having uh, more electron density. So this is uh, prone to undergo uh, protonation in the presence of mild acidic conditions. And if we take the isoquinoline derivative, under strong acidic conditions, C5 is the most favorable place for electrophilic substitution followed by C8. And under moderately acidic conditions, C1 position is having the more negative charge. So this undergoes electrophilic substitution very readily. And uh, in the case of acids and the Lewis acids, they basically react with the quinoline at the basic nitrogen atom to form quinoleum salt. Basically, the first proton addition happens on this particular nitrogen followed by, by the electrophile addition to the aromatic ring. When we use uh, nitric acid, sulfuric acid mixture, that is the nitrating mixture, the E here is the nitro group uh, is introduced here. So this is the major product, which is the 8 substituted one, followed by the 5 substituted product as a minor product. And when we use bromine and the sulfuric acid, uh, the electrophile here is a bromine. So again, here again, we are getting the maximum yield of the 8 substituted product for bromination also. But if we use a different nitrating mixture, that is acetyl nitrate as the nitrating mixture, then we are actually getting the nitration on the pyridine ring itself. So this is the major difference. By changing the reagent for this particular reaction, we can actually affect the or change the uh, electrophilic addition either on the aromatic ring or on the pyridine ring. So when we use uh, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, the strong nitrating mixture, the nitration happens on the aromatic ring that is on the benzene ring. Whereas when we use acetyl nitrate, in this particular case, what happens is basically the nitro group adds to the nitrogen and uh, the nitronium ion then adds to the bin, uh, pyridine ring only. So the acetylation actually acetyl unit is the one which adds to this particular carbon. So that leads to the formation of this particular intermediate and this intermediate loses uh, acetic acid that is uh, HOAC is lost, hydrogen is lost from this carbon and OAC is lost from this carbon leading to the nitro derivative on this particular carbon that means 1, 2, 3. So the three substituted nitro derivative, uh, quinoline derivative is formed when we use acetyl nitrate as the nitrating agent. And uh, when we talk about the next uh, electrophilic substitution reaction where we are going to introduce a bulky uh, sulfonic acid group. So in this particular case, uh, when we are using uh, sulfur trioxide, what happens is uh, the uh, sulfonation actually happens at A position, but because of the peri interaction, that means there is a nitrogen here and there is a sulfonic acid group here. So this is a pretty bulky group and uh, there is a peri interaction happening between the 1, 8 positions, this is actually a quite unstable in a product. So while heating this uh, product, uh, what happens is this undergoes uh, shift from this particular 8 position to this 6 position actually takes place. So this is what is called the comparison between kinetic and thermodynamic control for this particular reaction. So this is the thermodynamically more stable product, so which is formed at high temperature, whereas at low temperature, the kinetic isomer is formed. So this reaction can be used as an example for how the kinetics and thermodynamics works for a particular chemical reaction. 
and when we treat alkyl and acyl halides with quinoline we end up with the n alkyl or n acyl quinoleum salts are formed so the alkyl halide or acyl halide adds to the nitrogen atom that leads to if it is acyl halide then we end up with the acyl quinoleum salt if it is an alkyl halide we end up with the alkyl quinoleum salt and uh, let us look at uh, the reactions of isoquinoline so here when we treat the isoquinoline with an electrophile again uh, similar to the quinoline derivative here again uh, the reaction actually occurs leading to two products and in this particular case what we have is this is one two three four five so this is the fifth position so the five substituted electrophile is formed as the major product compared to the eight substituted isoquinoline derivative so here again when we use the nitrating mixture uh, the e group is the nitro groups and when we use the bromine and the alcl3 conditions here so here we are using the lewis acid and not the mineral acid for this particular reaction so that leads to the electrophilic substitutions on the pi position and if we look at the hx addition so basically hx we can have a hydrochloride acid in the presence of bromine so hydrochloric acid is used as the mineral acid in this particular case and bromine is added so in this particular case the bromine is added to the pyridine ring only and in the other case this is in the case of isoquinoline and in the case of quinoline if we take this actually goes to 1 2 3 so the three position the bromination happens in other words the electrophilic substitutions in the presence of hx actually happens on the pyridine ring so this is what you have to remember and uh, if you use other catalyst especially in the case of uh, isoquinoline the aromatic ring undergoes reaction when we use strong mineral acids whereas when we use hx that is hydrochloric acid is used basically the reaction happens on the pyridine ring either for the isoquinoline or for the quinoline so in both the cases only the pyridine ring undergoes electrophilic substitution and not the benzene ring let us look at uh, the nucleophilic substitution reaction so here uh, let us look at uh, the various uh, positions where the reaction can actually undergo so as we mentioned earlier for the nucleophilic substitution this uh, pyridine ring is the one which is actually having uh, less electron density compared to the benzene ring so that is the reason the nucleophile can attack this pyridine ring which is electron deficient comparatively so let us look at uh, the addition taking place at c2 position so here again uh, we are uh, giving some examples to see how the reaction actually proceeds so the nucleophile this is the bromine which is going to be replaced by the methoxy derivative so the o methoxy anion attacks this particular carbon and the bromine is lost and the bromine is of course lost in the last step so here we have couple of uh, resonance intermediate that are possible so in this particular case when the anion attacks this particular carbon so we are having a nitrogen which is having a negative charge so we already know nitrogen is an electro negative atom and it can actually have the negative charge much more effectively compared to a carbanion so we have a nitrogen anion here we have a carbanion here we have another carbanion here so when we have carbanion and the nitrogen anion nitrogen is more electro negative so this is a more stable intermediate and when we look at uh, the nucleophile attacking the three position so in this particular case we have three intermediates that are possible again one carbanion another carbanion another carbanion so in this particular case when the attack happens on the c3 carbon there is no intermediate which is having a negative charge on the electro negative nitrogen atom and if you look at the c4 attack c4 attack leads to one intermediate where we have a negative charge on the electro negative atom so if you look at the c2 attack and the c4 attack we have a more electro negative atom having a negative charge which is a more stable intermediate so in other words when we say nucleophilic substitution for uh, quinoline moieties basically c2 or c4 are more preferred compared to c3 
So, and if you look at the isophenoline derivatives, the nucleophilic uh, attack actually happens on the one position because this is the most uh, uh, electron uh, deficient carbon. So that is the reason the nucleophile can attack this carbon much more effectively. So this is a major product which is obtained for many of the isophenoline reactions. And of course, uh, this is a minor product that can also be formed. So if the nucleophilic substitution with the displacement of a leaving group happens, then if we have a halogen here, then the displacement of, as we had seen here, even when there is a hydrogen which is present here, the nucleophile can actually attack the C1 position very effectively. And if it is replaced by a very good leaving group, then obviously this carbon is going to be much more prone to undergo nucleophilic substitution. So when we have a very good leaving group that is a chlorine here, that leads to the maximum nucleophilic substitution on isophenolene followed by the three position followed by the four position. So the rate of uh, reaction is basically the one position halogen undergoes nucleophilic substitution much higher compared to three position followed by four position. And the, another important reaction which uh, we have also seen in the case of pyridine is a uh, addition of a nucleophile ring opening and ring closing reaction or unrock reaction. So in this particular case, what happens is when there is a strong nucleophile that is uh, uh, NH2 minus is uh, present, uh, is attacking this particular isophenolene moiety. So what happens is this particular ring actually opens up and the ring opening is shown here in this particular intermediate and this after uh, uh, additional reaction that is Cyanide is formed as shown. A C triple bond and intermediate is formed, which undergoes uh, uh, this particular uh, cyclization once again to give this substituted isophenolene moiety. But if you look at from here and here, basically what happened is the nitrogen uh, shown here is basically the, uh, which is present in the ring is actually taken outside of the ring as shown here. And the nucleophile which attacks here becomes the part of the ring. So that is what is the major thing here. You, using isotopic labeling studies, it was proved that the amine uh, which comes or which forms in the isoquinoline after the reaction actually came from the external unit. That means a sodamide or whatever is the amine uh, source. That is the one which is incorporated into the isoquinoline ring and the Nitrogen which is already present in the ring becomes the amino substituent as shown here. So this is what is the addition by a nucleophile ring opening and ring closing reaction. This is very very important reaction for many pyridine uh, like uh, derivatives. The next one is the reduction and oxidation reaction. So uh, as we know benzene ring and the pyridine ring can undergo reduction very effectively. So when we take the quinolins uh, reduction uh, tin and HCl reduction partially reduces the pyridine ring only, whereas uh, use of a strong metal uh, catalyst like a palladium and a hydrogen reduces both the aromatic ring as well as the pyridine ring. So the complete reduction takes place. So this is uh, the case of um, the reduction for this particular isoquinoline derivatives. And when we talk about oxidation, uh, strong oxidizing agents like potassium dichromate and sulfuric acid actually cleaves this particular uh, benzene ring. So we get the dicarboxylic acid which on uh, heating with uh, heating loses carbon dioxide to give the corresponding uh, carboxylic acid derivative. This is nothing but the nicotinic acid. Now let us uh, study about acridines. Acridines are basically the six-membered uh, tricyclic heteroaromatic compounds containing nitrogen. So these are the six-membered uh, tricyclic nitrogen compounds. Acridine structure is shown here. So it was first isolated in 1970 from coal tar and it was given this name based on the acrid odor and the acrid skin irritating effect. So that's the reason the compound was given the name acridine. And acridine orange basically is one important compound which is used as a nucleic acid sensitive fluorescent dye. And uh, acridines are because of the presence of nitrogen, the acridines are mildly basic. Let us look at some important acridines. So propylenein is a given structure is given here. Tacrine and uh, bucrecaine are some of the 
derivatives which are shown. If you look at very carefully, many of them are in fact, most of the acridin derivatives are the amino derivatives which are very, very important things. So the profiline is uh, disinfectant bacteriostatic against a gram positive bacteria and uh, tacrin is uh, plus choline stress inhibitor for Alzheimer's disease and uh, bucrigan is a anesthetics. So these are some of the important compounds. And here we look at the acrylines retrosynthesis. The more about this particular schematic can be found in the biomedical applications of acrylene progress and drug research. This book talks lots about this particular synthesis. So if anyone is interested, they can also look at this book for further reactions. And in all the cases, if you look at the synthesis of acrylene starts from this particular compound, that is the amino compound. The ben, uh, <coughs> both the aromatic rings are connected using the nitrogen here and then uh, we are also having a carboxylic acid which can uh, undergo cyclization to give various intermediate but how this uh, intermediate can be prepared so the starting material is we have a aromatic ring with the two basically one two three so there are three functional groups which are involved in the formation of the middle ring and uh, both the outside rings that is uh, side rings are coming as a benzene unit substituted benzene units only so we have three functional groups which are responsible for this particular cyclization which leads to acridine derivatives so one is a carboxylic acid ester group or a carboxylic unit group another one is a halogen unit and we have a amino unit so this can be present on the same compound say for example the ester and the halogen can be present on the same aromatic compound or the ester and the halogen can be present on two different compounds. Here again, if you look at um, this particular intermediate, we are having a benzene type intermediate is present here. So this again is having the carboxylic acid unit and the amino unit. Similarly, the amino unit can come from a separate uh, benzene ring or the amine unit can be present in the same ring as the carboxylic unit. So these are the various uh, retrosynthetic schemes. The retrosynthesis is basically how the final product can be uh, prepared from the starting material. So we are doing the reverse uh, synthesis of the same thing. So if we have to have the three uh, six-membered uh, rings, then we start from one to two six-membered ring and we form the middle ring finally. So this is how the retrosynthesis schemes generally work. Uh, let us start with uh, Benson acridine synthesis. In this particular case, a uh, diarylamine. Basically, in this particular case, uh, we have the Simple unsubstituted uh, benzene units are present here. This is heated with the carboxylic acid in the presence of uh, Lewis acid. Basically, zinc chloride is used in this particular case. Instead of carboxylic acid, we can also use an acid anhydride, which leads to this cyclization in which uh, the nine position of the green ring is substituted. But this synthesis has some of the major limitations. One is uh, this reaction actually gives a very low yield and the need for the each uh, set of reaction condition to be dependent on the substrate. So based on the substrate, the reaction condition has to be chosen and we have to keep on modifying the reaction conditions and the yields for these reactions are also very low. And uh, if we are using uh, electron deficient uh, substrates like uh, paranitrobenzoic acid, then the reaction doesn't actually lead to this particular cyclization. So this is another major, major challenge uh, which uh, could not be uh, fulfilled by this particular synthesis. Now the pop had uh, made some modification to the same reaction. So instead of uh, the zinc chloride which was used as the cyclizing agent, he used a polyphosphoric acid. And this was used both as a solvent and as an acid in some cases. And the reaction in this particular modification led to reactions uh, within 15 minutes, whereas the previous uh, uh, synthesis required uh, many hours for completion. And here again, the reaction between electron-rich substrates such as uh, para amino benzoic acid and uh, diphenylamines were successful, but uh, the electron deficient thing were still uh, very difficult to make. The next one is the Ullmann condensation reaction. So in this particular case, the reaction involves condensing orthochlorobenzoic acid with uh, basically aniline or uh, substituted uh, amino derivatives and um, Anthranilic acid also can be used with chlorobenzene. So the, these are the two different starting materials which can be used. One is the orthochlorobenzoic acid reacting with the 
aniline derivative that is the amine comes from one unit and the chloro and the carboxylic acid present in the same unit or the anthranilic acid that is the ortho amino benzoic acid can be treated with the chlorobenzene so the chlorine comes from the second uh, unit whereas the amine and the carboxylic acid present in the same carb uh, same aromatic unit so these are all the two different uh, starting materials uh, combinations which can be used to prepare this particular intermediate so either we use these two to get this uh, particular intermediate or uh, anthranilic acid and chlorobenzene can also be used to create the same intermediate so once the intermediate is formed this undergoes a cyclization to give this particular derivative this cyclization can be affected using sulfuric acid or even poly uh, phosphoric acid that leads to this particular uh, intermediate and uh, basically this is nothing but the nine acridinone so this nine acridinone is uh, reduced uh, using sodium and uh, butanol and final dehydration leads to aromatization of the final acridin product and if you look at the mechanism of cyclization reaction we have a carboxylic acid and we have a polyphosphoric acid so this polyphosphoric acid actually uh, creates the uh, acyl uh, carbonium ion is formed here so this carbocation attacks this uh, aromatic ring which is electron rich and this leads to the cyclization happening here which leads to the acridinone derivative so this acridinone is uh, reduced basically to the corresponding hydroxy derivative and this loses water molecule and uh, finally uh, re-aromatization leads to the acridine derivative as shown here the next one is goldberg's method so in this particular method uh, n-phenyl anthranilic acid on reaction with uh, phosphorus oxychloride or uh, here instead of uh, the cyclization leading to the acridinone derivative that is uh, sulfuric acid or ppa is used for the cyclization to give, get the carbonyl unit in the central carbon in the previous method uh, that is the ulman method in this particular case instead of uh, the cyclization leading to the ketone that is a carbonyl unit use of pocl3 leads to the halo derivative and this halo derivative can further be reduced to the corresponding uh, reduced product which on oxidation or aromatization leads to the acridine derivative so the reaction uh, only this particular intermediate formation is a little bit different from the ulman synthesis the starting material is one and the same like uh, the same way two sets of uh, starting materials are used to form the corresponding uh, uh, cycle uh, the intermediate as shown here this undergoes reaction with pvocl3 so that is the crucial change in this goldberg's method then we have a couple of other synthesis one is uh, friedlander synthesis in this particular case the anthranilic acid is uh, heated with uh, cyclohexenone that is uh, cyclohex 2e known at 120 degree centigrade leads to 9 methyl acridine derivative as shown here and from acridinone we have actually seen earlier the acridinone can be reduced directly then uh, further oxidized to give the corresponding uh, acridines Whereas in this particular case, the acridinone can also be reacted with the phenyl lithiums, and this gives this particular product, which on acidification gives a 9 phenyl uh, acridine. Because if you are using phenyl lithium, then the phenyl unit is introduced on this particular carbon, that is the ninth position. So, this way, what we can do is from the acridinone, instead of unsubstituted acridines, we can also make substituted acridines. The next one is the high temperature reaction. So, in this case, Benzyl aniline is uh, heated through a red hot tube at 700 degree centigrade that leads to the formation of acridine or we can also what we can do is the benzyl 2 amino phenol can also be heated and uh, passed over the zinc gives the corresponding acridine. So these are the two reactions which are basically carried out at very high temperatures. This also leads to the formation of acridine. Now let us quickly look at some of the reactions of uh, acridines. So the acridines undergo electrophilic substitution. So if we look at the numbering what we have been seeing so far, basically in all the heterocyclic uh, systems what we have seen so far, the number starts from the heteroatom only. But in this particular case, this is exception to the systematic numbering. 
and uh, the number actually starts from this particular carbon which is actually uh, if you look at say it is a trans carbon we can for our understanding we can say this is a trans carbon to the nitrogen derivative so in this case the electrophilic reaction basically occurs on 2 and 7 positions so when we use uh, nitric acid and the sulfuric acid the nitrating mixture when we are using we have the nitration happening on the 2 position and the 7 position basically the molecule is very symmetrical so that is the reason the substitution takes place at both the position and when we look at the bromination uh, what we are getting is again the 2 7 di substituted derivative is formed that is the bromo derivative and also the 2 position again a mono brominated derivative is also formed in small amount and when we talk about uh, sulfonation the sulfonation actually takes place at uh, one position and uh, one eight uh, positions. So that is the only difference in the case of sulfonation reaction. So this does not give the two and seven reaction, but uh, this gives one and eight substituted product. And uh, when we talk about uh, nucleophilic substitution reaction, actridine basically undergoes nucleophilic substitution again at the nine position. So that is um, uh, first the nucleophile adds and then this undergoes re-aromatization to give the 9 substituted derivative. So uh, the Chichibabin reaction we have seen earlier. So where uh, ring opening uh, in this particular case uh, sodamide and liquid ammonia reacts with acridine to give the 9 position where the amino group is basically formed. And uh, when we do the carboxylation reaction basically we introduce the cyano group in the first step that is treatment of acridine with the casein gives the cyano derivative that is the nucleophilic substitution takes place followed by NaNO2's uh, hydrolysis uh, leads to the corresponding carboxylic acid. And uh, under MRT reaction conditions, uh, this is a carbonyl that is the ketones. When a ketone is reacted with uh, acridine in the presence of mercury chloride, leads to uh, substitution on the 9 position. And uh, when we use uh, isopropyl carboxylic acid, and the silver nitrate uh, reaction. This is a, a particular uh, reaction in which we can actually introduce the isopropyl group on the 9 position. So this reaction also leads to the substitutions on the acridine ring. Then when we talk about oxidation and the reduction reactions, uh, sodium dichromate based oxidation leads to uh, basically the acridinone is oxidized to acridine. And this acridine on uh, reaction with the KMnO4 sodium hydroxide oxidation leads to the breakage of this one particular uh, benzene ring which leads to quinoline 23 dicarboxylic acid is formed and on reduction what we give is a tetrahydro derivative is formed. So uh, the central pyridine ring remains aromatic and the other two uh, the outside rings are basically reduced. And let us look at some of the important acridine drug candidates. Trophaline is a disinfectant and a bacteriostatic agent against many gram-positive bacteria. It is also working as a topical antiseptic. And uh, amsacrine and uh, azulacrine and uh, nitracrine are some of the derivatives which are used as a anti-leukemic, anti-cancer and anti-tumor reagents. Let us recap what we have studied in the summary. We have studied so far uh, various synthesis of quinolins, isoquinolins and acridines. In the synthesis of quinolins, we studied about Combs synthesis, Krupp synthesis, dobner von miller reaction, Camp synthesis, Friedlander, Fitzinger reactions, conard limpan synthesis. We also studied about uh, isoquinoline synthesis, mainly the pavrans fritz synthesis, bischler nipierski reaction. Pictet Gams synthesis, Bruckner synthesis, Pictet Spengler reactions. And we also studied about the reactions of quinolins and isoquinolins, mainly focusing on electrophilic and nucleophilic reactions. We also studied about the aromatic nucleophilic ring opening and ring closing mechanism. We also studied about reductions and oxidations of quinoline and isoquinolins. Finally, we also studied about the synthesis and the reactions of acridines. In the synthesis, we studied about Bertsen synthesis, Wolman condensation, Friedlander synthesis. We also studied about electrophilic and the nucleophilic reactions of acridines, Androck reduction and oxidation reaction. 
with this we conclude this session thank you